वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्यकोटी समप्रभा निर्विघ्नम कुरु मे देवा सर्वकार्येषु सर्वदा सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामरूपिनी विद्यारंभं करिष्यामि सिद्धे भवतु मे सदा गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वरः गुरुदेव परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम नारायण हरिओम इन ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम पोर्टलैंड एज लॉन्ग एज वी फील वी आर फाइनाइट वी वुल बी अनहैपी This is a fact, and all of our experiences to date would confirm the same. As long as I feel I am finite, I will be unhappy. What we need is to transcend finitude. And by transcending finitude, I start to feel infinite. When I feel infinite, I will be not happy but happiness. What we are experiencing is a transcendental science. We are listening, we are thinking about how to transcend transcend the finite transcend sadness and we're doing this through the guru shishya parampara one word to describe the guru is love a guru loves so deeply that even when a guru is not physically present the guru is still looking after our needs to help us transcend and shri ramana is a fine expression of that that though his body has died decades ago though no one in our course has met him but after 24 weeks of listening and thinking how close we feel to him an expression of transcending transcending the limits of time space in shloka 24 we came to appreciate that existence is not an object like this desk or blinds or city these are all objects existence is not an object yet every object desk blind city indicates existence if there was no existence there couldn't be a desk blind city so these objects are actually a linga a shiva linga linga means to indicate to show to direct the shiva shiva is sat is existence 
We think of a Shivalinga made of stone only, but one with knowledge, one with vision. Their gym bag, their car tires, the person who's being mean to them. All of these are a Shivalinga. Pointing out the existence that is present. Guruji had shared with all of us. We may begin with Purusha Tantra. Purusha <coughs> Tantra means the perspective or the um, envisioning from the Purusha to that uh, entity. So let me share this more simply. When I see a stone carved in a smooth way, I project, the human project, that this is an icon of Bhagavan Shiva. Like a Christian would see this on a cross, correct? That's all called Purusha Tantra. It is my perspective. We may begin with that, but we have to evolve to Vastu Tantra. Vastu Tantra means this is the nature of that entity. So I project that Bhagavan Shiva is an icon this shivling as an icon, but the Vasu Tantra is that this is actually existence. My perspective is not needed. My projection is not needed. This is the truth. So from Purusha Tantra, that I'm seeing indicators of existence, to Vastu Tantra, that this is existence. What does this vision achieve? What does this vision feel like? I'm using the word feeling a lot because we don't want to get stuck in intellectualizing all of this. This has to be experiential. And this 25th shloka is lovely in that sense. Veshahanatas Swatmadarshanam Veshahanatas Swatma Darshanam Isha Darshanam Swatma Rupataha Isha Darshanam Swatma Rupataha Vesha Hanataha Vesha is that layer Hanata means to burn to let go of this In a more implied meaning, it is to transcend conditionings. That's what Guruji has written. Anything that you can give up, you should let go of. Anything you can give up about you, you should let go of that identification. This is what Vesha Hanataha means. If you can give it up, then let go of it. And we can give up the identification with the body, breath, mind, intellect, ego. You cannot give up the identification or the experience of the self. And since I can't give it up, that must mean that is who I am. The word Vesha means layers, conditionings. Vesha means clothes. And Hanataha means to um, discard. We can do that with this attire. Sometimes you see me wearing a sweater, sometimes a coat, sometimes just a kurta. I can let go of all of this. And the fact that I can let go of it, that Hanata shows that this is objects that are indicating that which is deeper. When we engage in puja, when we sit at an altar, so much of that puja is oriented towards the deva, the devi. And so a purpose of puja is to shift from deha puja to deva puja. I'm worshipping this body as if 
this is the absolute sense of me. But once I engage in this visualization of Bhagavan Shiva, Mother Parvati, whoever it may be, I start to see their hair, their skin, their virtues. I forget or I disidentify from my own body. Like an athlete who's lost in that, in that competition, in that exercise, there's no hunger or thirst. When we engage in our puja, when we engage in our sadhana, that's the ideal. Where one forgets about their own body. They lose body consciousness. Swatma darshanam. The English word for darshana is vision. I have a vision of the truth. I have a vision of this water bottle. This word vision means I am experiencing that which is different than me. The truth is different. The water bottle is different. But here, what is the vision of? Sva, Atma. It's not even Atma Darshana, because I may say, I have a vision of your spirit. Atma means spirit. I have a vision of spirit, intellectually or yours. Whose Atma? Sva, Atma. I have a vision of my own Atma. When I have a vision of my own Atma, that's not a vision, it's experience. And so the correct wording is Swanubhuti. Anubhuti means to experience. Swa, I'm experiencing myself. I've stopped becoming and I've started being. There's a lovely Upanishad, Chandogya Upanishad. In chapter 7, one of the main messages is Bhumeva Sukham. Bhuma Eva Sukham. Infinity alone is happiness. And opening up this word Bhuma, Ma means no. Like we chant, Ma vid vishavahai, which means may we not fight, may we not disrespect each other. Bhu means becoming. So Bhuma means not becoming. Bhuma means stop becoming. When I'm not becoming, when I stop becoming, what am I doing then? Being. I am being what is ever being. Existence, awareness, joy, swatma darshan. That is the ends, the means to this. Isha darshan. I'll give you some layers here. I'll give you some levels. The first darshan, the first vision we try to bring into our lives to get to swatma darshan is our Vishwa Darshana, to have the vision of the Creator. And where do we see our Creator the most? Where do you see the Creator the most? At a mandir, correct? At a temple. Maybe at your altar. Many people have this icon of Bhagavan Krishna from chapter 11 of Bhagavad Gita, where he has a thousand heads and a thousand arms and a thousand feet. This is called the Vishwa Rupa. It's me having the feeling of the divine being in a murti. The divine being in a article, in an object. But the more, the more you engage in upasana. Upa means near. And asana means sit. The more you sit near that murti, and I'll call all of us out on this. How many of you engaged in formal puja before you be began your day today? By a show of hands. I see maybe five hands out of dozens in our classes. That's a small percentage. Upasana means to sit near. 
because in sitting near there's more understanding. One uh, virtue that comes out with upasana is steadiness. When we become steady, our upasana should be regular, should be a habit. So with a murti, that upasana will eventually evolve to upanishad. To upanishad. The word upanishad sounds like upasana, but there's a difference. The difference is that n i which sometimes people interpret means sit near, like upasana, but sit near and below. Upasana is I sit near. I sit beside someone. Upanishad means to sit near and below. But that ana is actually nishchaya, which means to sit near with determination, to sit near with sincerity. Upasana will lead to Upanishad. My steadiness should evolve to sincerity where I stop feeling the divine in just a murti, but I start to feel the divine in my madhyama, in my heart. This is where I go from Vishwarupa to Ishta Rupa. Vishwarupa is the creator in general. Ishta Rupa is the creator in specific. My creator. My God. You know how some kids talk about their parents like that? that my mother is a better cook than your mother. Or my father is stronger than your father. And it's a weird comparison, but you have to appreciate the sincerity with which they're saying it. How much closeness they feel with their, their mother, their father. Ishta Rupa. And we have lots and lots and lots of examples of our Rishis who had this Ishta Rupa Darshana. We've all had a Vishwa Rupa Darshana. We study Bhagavad Gita. Ishta Rupa Darshana is when you feel Bhagavan in your own heart. Like Tulsidas Ji when he's not well and he feels Hanumanji is helping him be well. When Acharya Shankara sees Bhagavan Panduranga, he sees him saying, Hey, this river of Maya is only waist deep. They feel that in their heart. Okay? So, so far, we are engaged in Upasana of a Murti. I'm sitting near an icon. This is called Vishwarupa Darshana. Deeper than that is that upasana, that steadiness, is now evolved to upanishad, which is sincerity. I now have ishta rupa darshana. I don't feel the creator just in an icon. I feel the creator in this icon. But there's one more. There's one more depth that comes about, which is called swa rupa darshana, swarupa darshana, which is where I have the vision that the divine is not in my heart, but the divine is me. And if the divine is me, the divine is all, which is why swarupa and brahma rupa are the same. Swarupa and Brahma Rupa, that's what Sri Ramana is trying to teach us that God realization is self realization. Self realization is God realization. When I feel Bhagavan in my heart, I will start to feel Bhagavan as me, and I am all. Where I go from Murti to Madhyama to Manava. Manava doesn't mean man. Manava doesn't mean humans either. Manava means all beings. It's easier to feel the creator in your heart than it is to feel it in another person's heart, especially another person who's mean to you, especially in the heart of someone who's selfish. But you see in our scriptures, when Shishupala, who's the most selfish, 
Bhagavan Krishna embraces him, absorbs him. Ravana is the same way. Ravana kidnaps Bhagavan Rama's wife, and Bhag Ravana goes into Bhagavan Rama's mouth. He's absorbed. Swarupa, Brahma Rupa. Everyone followed that? So systematic, our Sri Ramana. Whatever you can give up. Give up. Now. If we focus on the body and mind while they're healthy, when the body and mind become less healthy, it'll be harder to give them up. It's like if a housing market is, is hot, there's more demand, it's easy to sell that house. But if that market cools, it becomes much harder to sell that house, correct? You're stuck. You have to try to sell it well. Um, it's easy to sell it. This is why in our tradition, memorization is a big point. Because back in the day, did they have corrective lenses? Did people go to lens crafters and wear clearly contacts and get <laughs> contacts delivered to their home? <laughs> when your eyes became weak, you just dealt with it. Not that it would be fun, but there was so much of training in memorization that even if I couldn't read the shloka, I already knew the shloka. So I can reflect on it, so I can internalize that. Let's chant together. Veshahanata Swatma Darshanam Yisha Darshanam Swatma Rupataha Not I.